Well, today we are going to discuss a few questions related to your O-level syllabus. So this is kind of a spot exam one. So I'll be discussing a few uh, questions related to your O-level to practice you. So the first question I'm going to discuss is related to equations. So this is the equations I'm, I'm going to take here. Now we, are, we have to find out the value of A, right? This value of A. So what we can do, first we can remove this. Um, 7. We can remove the 7. So I can carry 7. This is a positive 7. When it comes here, it becomes negative. And this negative 3a is there and 2. To uh, bring this 3a here, right? So directly we can't bring it. We have to remove the 2. So I had to multiply. When I multiply this whole thing by 2, I had to multiply from both the sides. Then I can cancel these two. Now I'm getting 4a minus 14 equal minus 3a. Now I'm bringing minus 3a here, it becomes plus 3a and minus 14 becomes plus 14. Now I'm getting 7a is equal to 14. Therefore, 1a is equal to 2. This is the way of solving the equation questions. Now let's look, and look into another question. I'm going to take a simultaneous equation. Right now you all know how simultaneous equations, you are getting two pairs of equations like this with two different unknown terms. Now I'm going to find values of both the terms. So I'm numbering my equation one and two, and I'm going to create similar terms. So I'm going to multiply my first equation by the LCM of these two is six. So I had to make six by multiplying by three. How can I multiply? Three times two, six, six. Three times seven, 21 by three times 11, 33. I'll take this as my one dash. I'm going to multiply my second equation by two and I'm going to get here, all thing multiplying by two. Two times three is six x, two times two is four y, two times four is eight, this is my second equation, two dash. Now I can say this is a bigger value. So what can I do? I can take one dash minus two dash. That is 33 minus eight, this side also, 6x, okay, let me take it below. 33 minus 8 equal first equation, 1 dash equation. 6x plus 21y minus, remember, minus, and 6x minus 4y, my 2 dash equation. When I solve 33 minus 8, I will be getting 25. And here I can 6x plus 21y minus 6x minus into minus, that is plus 4y. Now, can you see positive 6x, negative 6x? Yes. What can you do now? You can cancel them off. So you are getting here 21 plus 4, you are getting 25y, here 25. So y is equal to 1. Now we found the value of y. Now we have to substitute the value of y to get the x value, right? So let me erase this top P equations now because I'm going to substitute and show you. So first you have to write down this one, right? Substituting y is equal to one in any equation. I'll take my first equation, right? Two x plus y means one. Seven times one is seven, equal 11. Two x equals 11 minus seven. What is 11 minus seven now? We are getting four. So two x is equal to four. Therefore, x is equal to 2. These are the answers that you have to write down. Right. Now I'm going to take my third question that is related to your real numbers lesson. A uh, little bit of square roots are given there now. We'll see. This is my question. 4, my third question. Square root 240 upon 5 root 40 multiply by root 60 multiply by root 30, multiply by root 120, and I'm going to divide by root 10. This is the question now. So we'll see how to solve this. So uh, first of all, we have to make these entire thirds into thirds. How do you do that? Let's do it right. 240 I'm going to take. Divide by prime numbers 120, divide by 260, divide by 230, 15, divide by 3, 5, divide by 5, 1. How many twos are there? Look at the board, right? I'm going to write my first 241 in expanded form. 2 into 2 into 2 into 2, right? I'm going to write, see, 1, 2, 3, 4, into 3, into 5. 
Now, can you see? 2 into 2, 4, 4 into 2, 8, 8 into 2, 16. 16 is a square number. Square root of 16 is 4. And 3 into 5 is 15. Now, I can do it in this manner. I can write 240. Instead of 240, I can write 4, 4 root 15. Now, like that, I have to do for everything. Can you understand? So, I have to take the next one, pi root 40. So, for that, I have to divide 40. Now, let's see. I'm going to divide 40 by 2, 20, 20 divided by 2, 10, 10 divided by 2, 5, 5 divided by 5, 1. So I'm going to write root 40 is equal to 2 into 2 into 2 into 5. Now I know 2 into 2, 4. So I can take 2 out, 2 into 5, 10. Now instead of root 40, I can take 2 root 10. Similarly, we'll do for root 60 also. 60 divided by 2, 30, 30 divided by 2, 15, 15 divided by 3, 5, 5 divided by 5, 1. Now I can write root 60 is equal to 2 into 2 into 3 into 5. So 2 into 2, 4, square root of 4 is 2. So 2 root 15. Now instead of root 60, I can take 2 root 15. Right. Now let's see for 30. 30 divided by 2, 15. 15 divided by 3, 5. 5 divided by 5, 1. Now I can write root 30 is equal to 2 into 3 into 5. What is it? 30. Again, you are getting the same thing. So no point writing that. We can't take squares out. Next, I can take 120. 120 if you divide by 2, 60. 60 divided by 2, 30. 30 divided by 2, 15. 15 divided by 5, you are getting 3. Sorry, 15 divided by 3, you are getting 5. 5 divided by 5, 1. So I can write 120 is equal to 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 into 5. Right now, look at the board. I can take the square terms out, right? 2 into 2, 4, 4 into 2, 8. But 4 is there on a children, so I can take 2 out. Others I can put inside 2 times 3, 6. 6 times 5, 30. Then root 10. Root 10 actually, we can't take out anything, so we had to write 2 times 5. Now, can you see? I have expanded all my entire thirds. Now, using these things only, we are going to solve this whole question. So, you have to Note down this stuff. Right. Now let me go to the question. Now look at this. Instead of root 240, I can write down 4 root 50. Instead of 5 root 40, I can write down 10 root 10. Instead of root 60, I can write down 2 root 15. Root 30, I have to write as it is. Root 120, I can write 2 root 30. Root 10, I have to write as it is. Now you have to cancel. Look at the board. Two ones, right? Okay, two times two here, two times one here, two times five here. Now, here I'm getting four root 15. Okay, sorry. Root 15 also you can cancel. Four upon five root 10. Multiply by here, uh, you are getting root 30 into root 30 means two, it's 30 only. And root 10 into root 10, here's so a root 10. Then you are getting 4 times 2, 8, right? 8 times 30 is 240. 5, root 10 into root 10 is 10. So you are getting 5 times 10. So what is the answer? You are getting 240 upon 50. 0 and 0 can be cancelled. This is an improper fraction, so you have to convert into mixed fraction. You are getting 5 times 4 is 20, 20 plus 4 is 24. This is the final answer for this real numbers question. Now, fourth question. We are going to find the LCM, right? Okay, this is what I'm going to give you. LCM of algebraic expressions, you all have... Uh, learned it right you have learned it in grade 10 and all so just have a look on this how we are going to find the lcm of this question so i can take here first one x into x plus 2 i can take the terms out x into x plus 2 here i can take x into x here x into x plus 2 into x plus 2 now if i look at the, this one common terms are here another pair is here. So I can take LCM is equal to x one term, x plus two another term, 
the remaining term x here and another remaining term x plus 2 here. If I solve this one, I get x squared into x plus 2 squared. So in other terms, I can tell x into x plus 2. The whole thing, you are getting a squared. This is the LCM of the algebraic expression. Right. So now let's go into the question number 5. Question number 5, I have taken from the graphs. Now I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to give you the equation y equal minus 4 minus x plus 2 square. So if, you, if I ask you, what is the minimum value? This first term, this is the minimum value. Minimum value is equal to minus 4. The coordinates, what are the coordinates of the turning point here now? Coordinates of the turning point, you should be able to identify when you look at the equation. This is positive to know, take the negative of that, right? If negative here, take the positive. If positive here, take the negative, right? That is your x coordinate. And the coordinate given in front is the your y coordinate, that is minus 4. This is the answer. So when we go to question number 6 now, this is 5. Question number 6, factorizing. So I can take ax squared, right? Minus 1 plus a minus x squared. So you can see that this is factorizing question. You have to take the factors out. So I can write this in this, man this manner. A into x squared and plus 1 if I make it. Minus 1 into x squared plus 1. The same thing that you have to write down here. Now you can see these two are same. And here this pair is taken now. A minus 1 and x squared plus 1. Well, right now the seventh question. Seventh question is from the square approximation and all. So little bit of working we have to do there. So let me just clear the board. Seventh question, I want you to find the closest square number for this one. Now root x is equal to 6.7. So what is the closest square number you can have for x? Closest square number. Just have a look on this. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared. 1 squared, you know, it is 1. 2 squared, 4. 3 squared, 9. But can you see the whole number is 6 here? So 6 is somewhere between these two. So if we can't take this, it's more than 6. So we have to consider this pair. Now starting from 2 squared, we have to start from 2 squared. We are going to find each pair like 2.1 into 2.1. 2.2 into 2.2, likewise. So let me start from 2.1 squared, you are getting 4.41. 2.2 squared, you are getting 4.84. 2.3 squared, 5.29. Now, still we didn't reach 6.7, closer to 6.7. 2.4 squared equal 5.76. Next is 2.5 squared, that is equal to 6.25, right? We have reached somewhere. We'll see 2.6 squared also. You are getting 7.16, that is more than 6.7. So we can't take that. We are going to consider this number, right? So after this, we have to go with 2.5. How to go? 2.51 squared, 2.52 squared, 2.53 squared. Likewise, you have to go. So 2.51 squared is 6.3, here 6.4, again 6.4. So still we have to reach, okay, uh, 2.55 squared, 5.4 squared, you are getting 6.5. 5.5 squared, 6.5. And 2.56 squared, you can get 6.6. .6. And here, 2.57 squared, 6.6, 2.58 squared. Wow, you are getting 6.7 exactly. So what is the closest approximation value for x? That is 2.58 is the answer. So because if I take 2.58 square root only, I'm getting 6.7. So you have to assume the value when you are calculating the closest answer, right? So now let's move into the question number eight. Question number eight is slightly easy, I have made it. Uh, if you can remember your grade nine theories and grade 10 theories on Pythagoras, Pythagoras relationship, you can do this. 
So here is the question now. I have a circle and this is the center of the circle. I can draw a triangle in the circle like this. And this is 90 degree perpendicular. And I mark them as the three vertices A, B, C, right? So this part A, C is root three centimeters and C, B is one centimeter. All right. So we have to find the length of A, B. So what can we do? We can apply Pythagoras. You know the Pythagoras theorem. If you have a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides. Hyper, hyper, hypotenuse squared is equal to sum of the other two sides. So I can take it here also. In the triangle ABC, my hypotenuse is AB. So I can write AB squared equal BC squared plus AC squared. So BC squared, I know that it's one squared. AC squared is root three squared. So one into one is one. Root three into root three is three. Square root of this is equal to AB. That means square root of four is equal to two centimeter. AB is equal to two centimeter. This is the answer for the question. So in this diagram, O is the center, AB is the hypotenuse. When you get a question like this, try to identify, since this is a 90 degree angle, definitely you should remember the Pythagoras theorem. You should know how to apply the Pythagoras theorem to find the unknown side of the triangle. Now let's move into the ninth question of the uh, today's video. So in this question, I have taken uh, share market questions kind of percentages also relevant here. Now I can tell a person is investing uh, 80,000. Person invest 80,000. And he's buying shares of each share, right? Let's like tell each share cost 20 rupees. After doing this, he's selling this each share for 30 rupees. Then only he can gain a profit. So my question is, what is his capital gain? A capital gain you learn in uh, grade 10. Uh, yeah, right, capital gain. So how do you find? First of all, you have to find how many shares did this person buy? I can write like this. He invested 80,000. So if I want to find the number of shares, I can write the amount invested divided by price of each share. For example, you have 80,000. You are buying uh, a certain item for each 20 rupees. So how many items you bought? You gave that 80,000 and you bought each 20 rupees. So number of items means the total amount invested should be divided by the price of each item. So you can get here 4,000. He has, he has bought 4,000 shares. I cancel my zeros, two times four. Yeah, okay, fine. Now, how much does he earn by selling each share, right? He's Selling price of each share is 30 rupees. So he earns how much for each? One share is 30 rupees. He bought 4,000 shares. So he will earn three times four, 12. One, two, three, four, four zeros. Right? 120,000 he is earning. Clear? Now, the next one, we are going to find the capital gain. Right? Uh, capital gain will be equal to Subtracting, right? 120,000, you have to subtract from 80,000. Then you will be getting 40,000 rupees. This is the capital gain, right? Amount he earned by selling the shares and amount he invested should be subtracted. Now let's move to the last question of the day. That is the this first part exam, the 10th question. Now you can try these questions at home to check whether you're getting these answers. Right, I'm going to give you an inequality. So you have to find three terms related to X. First, we'll solve the inequality. Four, uh, I can bring here the minus two. Four plus two is less than or equal to plus three X, and you are getting six less than or equal to three X. I can divide both sides, and I'm getting two, and here I'm getting X. That means X is greater than or equal to positive two. What are the values I can write for x? Equal to two also, no? two, three, four, five. Likewise, I can write down. So these 10 questions, I think I have covered for a certain part. And I think uh, it was helpful for you to revise certain uh, lessons in your uh, syllabus.
and practice these questions more and more uh, we'll meet up with another video okay so then goodbye